I'm Danielle with Put a Finish on It. Welcome to my September wrap up. The first book I completed in September was on September 1st because I was trying really hard to get it into my August count and didn't quite make it. It is The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, age 13 and 3 quarters, by Sue Townsend from 1982. The first in a wildly popular classic British YA series, count me in. I love that the story of Adrian Mole continues into his adulthood. That's a treat readers so rarely get with beloved YA characters. So I really wanted to love Adrian and look forward to the rest of the series. Unfortunately, I only liked him. I think the diary wasn't always the right format for the story since the reader gets everything secondhand. It felt a little too removed for me to care sometimes. It wasn't quite a page turner. But there were some funny moments and I would pick up the next book if I found it. I'm still curious who Adrian grows up to be. Next I read My Bridges of Hope, a post-Holocaust memoir for young readers from 1999. I haven't read Livia Bitten Jackson's first book, I Have Lived a Thousand Years. I have read enough accounts of Auschwitz that I want to focus my attention now on what happened to survivors after the war was over. My Bridges of Hope covers the time from when Ellie and her mother and brother returned to their village in Czechoslovakia through the several years it takes for them to make it to the United States. It was a fascinating read of the chaos in Europe at the time of the redrawing of boundaries. She's from a border town in Czechoslovakia and suddenly the school that she attends is in Hungary and then the Soviets take over and everyone is taught Russian. Ellie is one of those young women with a gift for learning and languages and who has remarkable determination and luck. Her story is incredible and I recommend it if you're interested in post-war Europe especially. Then I read a short little thing called My Angelica by Carol Lynch Williams, also from 1999. Oi, this one had some okay moments. From the size of the book and the cover, I expected the protagonist to be 12 years old. But she's a sophomore in high school and the characters weren't quite believable. She's in love with her best friend and he loves her back even though they don't admit it to each other and she's convinced she's writing these great romance novels and that he loves them even though he secretly thinks they're terrible. Actually, it's not secret. He tells her they're terrible and she still believes that he loves them. She's going to enter one of her romance novels into the school writing contest and humiliate herself and he can't let her do it. There were several elements to this book that just felt dated or out of place. There's a boy at school named Bob and they call him Boob which is just not an insult teenagers would use in 1999. The purposefully bad writing for the excerpts from her romance novels was fun, but I don't think they made it worth the read. To my dismay, it looked like I was only going to have read three books in September, and all YA at that. I got another editing client, and after working on manuscripts all day, sometimes reading more was the last thing I wanted to do. I couldn't let September end on a sour note, so I picked up A Short History of Women by Kate Walbert, from 2009. This is a multi-generational novel that opens with the suffragette in England going on hunger strike in 1914, which her 13-year-old daughter and 10-year-old son witness. We then follow the lives of her daughter and her son's daughter and granddaughter and great-granddaughter until we're in post 9-11 New York City. I really liked this book. The only issue that I had is that it's not linear, and that made it particularly difficult to follow the story. I wasn't able to get lost in it as I kept having to flip back to the front and look at the family tree, and I had to keep switching countries and centuries throughout the story. I enjoyed one woman's fascination with Florence Nightingale as more than a nurse, and I really enjoyed the story of each woman wanting and sometimes finding a way to do something. Capital D, capital S. The novel explores women's roles through time, women's identities. Of course, women have been historically defined by their relationship to men, and there's always been those who fought that. At one moment in the story though, I thought everyone on this earth, men included, is trying to find meaning, trying to do something. Men could find their careers just as meaningless as women sometimes do, and men could find balancing jobs and parenting just as soul sucking. Maybe being the soldier and the provider is just as much not enough as being the nurturer or teacher. I enjoyed these women's stories a lot, not just because they got me thinking about women's struggles, but because they also got me thinking about human struggles. Those are all the books I managed to finish in September. Thanks for watching.